honestly, I don't even know how to start <laughs> how to start this podcast anymore. Uh, the last time you heard my voice on this format was at the end of 2020. We had just recorded an episode about, I think, uh, networking and, um, you know, kind of like looking at goal setting for the new year. And we went on our holiday breaks and we came back and we were like, you know what, we'll start the podcast like a week into the year. Like, let's take a week off and we can get back, settle up, get our, our shit in line, and then we'll bring the podcast back. And then we didn't. <laughs> And people have been asking me all year long, like, yo, what's up with the podcast? When's that coming back? I miss Black Window Cream. What's happening to Black Window Cream? Did you guys quit? Like, I totally get it if you did because you're busy with, like, your real life shit. But, like, what's up with it? And I don't know how to answer that. I never knew how to answer that because uh, I didn't know what was happening. To be honest, like, we experienced extreme burnout at the end of 2020. Obviously, the pandemic and everything like that played a huge role in everything but like i mean up till that point we had released 220 some episodes of this podcast that are usually over an hour long each if not more and interviewing people setting up interviews recording editing making thumbnails clipping shit posting socials creating captions trying to make newsletters weekly text like we were doing an insane amount of work. At one point, we were doing eight episodes a month, plus like a bonus episode for like our Patreon page that we used to have. It was like, it was an unreal amount of work and we, you know, that caught up to us. Um, we have a small team. My, my homie Dave, who you all know on the morning roast, like we do that together. He helps me with everything, like everything. You know, every interview we do, me and him are collaborating on it, et cetera. We've never taken a dime from Black Window Cream. That money just sits in an account and we use it to invest into, we had the studio up until, you know, the beginning of this year, I decided to get rid of that. Um, we were paying for that. We were paying an editor, thumbnail artist, a graphic designer. Like we, up before that, before we could even afford to pay anyone, we had people helping us as interns and, and it took a fucking village to build that shit and it was amazing, but it was a lot of work. And, you know, coming into the new year, I don't know. We just hit the brakes and we I, I assume we get back to it. But we just kind of were like in our groove. We, You know, I make films. I make videos for a living. Dave does the same. We picked up speed in our, our careers. We were working on projects. And each project, I'd be like, all right, after this one, I'll get back to the Black and the Cream. And we just never did. And I think I, I sat back and was trying to figure out, like, what the fuck is it? And for the longest time, I've always known that I wanted to rebuild our community. Uh, if you go back to when this all started, like what is Black Window Cream? 2016, I'm on tour with Schoolboy Q. We did a world tour. I made weekly or uh, you know web series episodes that would go up plus photos and shit. And I built up a like small, small following of like creative fans, people that were fans of my work creatively, uh, which was amazing. And they were reaching out all the time and they were asking me questions like I was when I was just getting started or back in Iowa trying to figure out how to crack the code and get into the industry. People are asking me those questions and I'm fucking never going to ignore people. So I was answering every single one of them. That's been my nature. I'm trying to answer them. And I felt like I was robbing people because I couldn't give like my fullest answers because it's on fucking DMs and I get like, you know, a shit ton of them every single day. And I, after a full day on tour, I would get in the bus and I'd lay there and I'd try to fire off and answer as many messages as I possibly could. Bah, 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 bah. I just respond, respond, respond. I try to give the quickest, straightforward answer I could that was hopefully educational and helpful, but also like, I, and most times I would like apologize. Like, yo, sorry, I'm, I'm like trying to go to bed. I'm tired. I have to be up in four hours, but here's your answer. And I, you know, after that, I realized like, yo, what if I could invite people to come ask those questions in like a public setting? Like, what if I created a group or a community where people could ask their questions and I could answer it there, which would be great because if I'm answering it for someone, it's like I'm killing two birds with one stone. Like, I'm answering it for you, but probably I'm answering a question that someone else had or what maybe they were planning to ask it or maybe they didn't even know they had that question in their head, but hopefully it helps them by reading it in a public setting. And then beyond that, I'm like, also, this is bringing everyone together, which means that there's other experts out there who are probably far more knowledgeable in a million different things than I am who could also weigh in. You know what I mean? Like if someone asked a question about like, they're like, Oh, I really want to get into wedding photography. I was hoping that you could point me in the right direction of like some good resources and shit. Well, guess what? I don't shoot wedding photography. I'm sure if I got put in a scenario where I had to shoot some wedding photos, I'd fucking go ham, but I don't do that for a living. But there's people out there that do do that for a living. 
people out there that have spent every day doing that one thing. So what if they were able to weigh in on the comments and, and help provide education, their insight, their value, their experience? Like that's fucking powerful. That was my idea. So I started it. I called it Black with No Cream because I fucking drink a lot of coffee and I take it black. And that's what I'm doing when I'm creating every single day. So it's a problem. It's not a problem. I love coffee. So anyway, I drop that shit. It booms. I realize how else can I help? So I, th- I was a fan of podcasts at the time and I was having really, really good conversations with a lot of fucking incredible talented creatives behind the scenes. And I'm like, man, what if I could, what if I could bring that to, you know, the forefront? Like, what if I had those conversations recorded? Like it meant so much to me. It taught me so much. All these conversations help me become better at what I do, whether it's business, whether it's just hearing come up stories, uh, gear related questions, behind the scenes stories about projects, whatever it was like, it helped me. So it would help a listener, someone that wanted to listen to, if you could stumble on this and be lucky enough to hear some of these conversations, I promise you it'd be educational. That's what I imagined and that's what it was. And we recorded 220 some episodes in the, you know, 2017 to 2021, basically. Um, And it was fucking awesome. Like we ended up getting an office, we would run contests, we, we had the community thriving at the same time that the podcast was thriving. And, and it was really cool. Um, but yeah, we were recording hella episodes, you know what I mean? Eight episodes a fucking month is a lot. And it hit us hard uh, at the end of 2020. And honestly, like when the pandemic hit before that, I always said I only ever want to do my interviews in person. There's, I, I need that eye to eye contact to like really be able to have a good dialogue. And COVID, you know, made us do Zoom shit. I fucking hate Zoom shit, but it is what it is. And I think that it just caught up to us in a way where we needed to take a break. And so we did. We hit the brakes and I realized that at some point I kind of fell out of touch with the community. Um, I think we became so enthralled with the podcast and building the podcast that it was like there wasn't enough time to go back to the community and try to be a participator in that space, um, a leader in that space to provide uh, value to that space. It was just, it became its own monster low key, like 8,500 people in a space Um, where they can just like tap into at any moment and be like, Hey, I had a question about this. Hey, I had a question about this or Hey, here, check out my new work or whatever the, whatever it's their, it's their own little space. So I didn't even need to be in it. I was just like, all right, cool. And then when we tried to use it, I'd be like, all right, cool. Maybe I just had a great discussion with, um, Ray VB who's shot for Jay-Z and Adele and she's, her photography is bananas. Maybe me and her have a really good discussion. I know there's 70% of our fucking members are photographers and videographers. So they'd benefit from hearing these stories. Right. And I go and try to tell them about that. And then it's like crickets because Facebook is a bitch. (laughs) Facebook wants to control the narrative, control my posting ability. They want me to pay a shit ton of money just to be able to like get the word out to our group. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it was like, it just drove me nuts. Like I just like lost interest in it because I'm like, man, I can't even like talk to my people. You know what I mean? Like I can't help my people. Facebook won't let me help them and it's unorganized and it's just whatever. And there's no way to really find creators in there, even though we have so many. Um, and that was always in my, the back of my mind. I think I, like I really started thinking about it in 2020 and was like, how can I build that? But there wasn't a lot of resources and shit. And, uh, I found some avenues and I started like dipping into it, testing things, check like really, really researching, um, and I had a, I had a shoot scheduled, uh, for EA games. There was a big, big, big video that we were going to do. And the day before the video was supposed to happen, they had to like cancel some stuff came up, technical issues. We literally had to cancel it, but we had already paid for a location and crew and all this stuff. And so we let everyone go, but I kept the location. I was like, what can I fucking do in here? I was like, do we make a video? Shout out to my boy, Cal Scrooby. We were going to like try to do a last minute music video, just give him a cool environment, you know, all that stuff. But then I was like, it was just like a lot going on. So I was like, what if I did a meetup? You know what I mean? Like we just do a meetup with like 30 people. I'll see how many black window cream members are actually in the area. I'll make a quick post on Instagram and we'll, and we'll just see. And I was very like, hey, if you want to come, you can come. It's free. I'm going to bring some coffee and some donuts and shit. We're going to link up and talk. I'm going to invite a director homie of mine. Shout out to Andrew Sandler. You all know him if you've been listening to the show forever. And uh, Connor Gold, who is a producer. I was like, I'm going to bring them in. We're going to have a discussion about creative networking uh, and just hang out. And we'll just see. 
But I'm like, only 30 seats are available. Don't sign up and not show up because I'm going to know who the fuck you are and I'm going to call you out. And that shit makes me mad when people waste people's time like that. So you have to come if you're going to come. And everybody came. Like all seats were filled. I think we even let in a couple more people, whatever. And we had an amazing two hour experience where we sat down, had a really cool conversation just on the panel side, but then everyone got to like kind of weigh in on their experiences and share about their shit. And we made sure that when we finished our talk that we're like, yo, before everyone leaves, we need you to go around the room and try to connect with at least three new people, like get three new cell phone numbers or emails or whatever that, that you could potentially collaborate with in the future. Everyone started doing it. Everyone's shooting the shit, having really cool conversations talking to me about their shit but then i'd see them go off and they networks like i saw the networking shit really happen in real time there and i real i was like bro that's it that's what i've been needing to do is like really fucking go after it really rebuild this whole community from scratch in a way where we can provide opportunities like this often where i can bring a person like andrew who has fucking won awards and he's directed music videos and produced content for Everybody under the sun, like all the biggest artists on the planet, this motherfucker has touched it. You know what I mean? And, and me, I've done some cool shit too, but like as a leader, I want to be able to say, yo, I have access to a lot of dope people and y'all are dope in general. And I might not know who you are, who you all are, but like if, imagine if we all get in the same space together, what could be done? So we did it. That was the day I left that shit inspired as fuck. We took a group photo. It's on the website. You'll see it. Everyone's in there hyped. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And so we bought into a program, a platform. I invested into it. We started building it, testing it, reworking it, designing for it, um, really trying to see if this this platform would be the thing because I know it's scary. Like, it's going to be scary for me to, A, tell everyone to, like, just leave the thing that they've been used to and, and then have to, like, teach them why it's going to be so crucial. And it's hard to do that. But, like, to me, I'm like, I would rather kill the Facebook group right now start from scratch and have just 50 members. Like if, 50, if we lost all 8,500 8, and had to start all start from scratch and just, you know, reboot everything, I'd rather have 50 like really die hard members who are down to help push one another than 8,500 people who kind of like don't know what the messaging is or what the goal of being in this group is. They just got suggested to it from someone they clicked in. So it can become like this messy thing where they don't even know what they're in. They just like, oh, this is like a group for whatever video people or whatever, but that's not it. So I'd rather start from scratch and, and just see what happens. And so we started, we got a beta group going. I invited like 20 some people to come and test it. And we tested it for a couple months and everything was smooth and we've worked out some of the kinks. And, uh, and then I would, each month I would be like, yo, I'm going to drop it, you know? And then I get booked. I had to fly to New York to go direct some shit with Alicia Keys. And I was like, after this shoot, I'm coming back. I'm not doing any more jobs. I'm going to drop the Black and No Cream community. And then as soon as I'm like finishing up the New York shoot, I'm invited to go to Boston like two weeks later to go do something at the Boston Marathon. So then I get flown out to Boston Marathon. And then I get back here and then I have to go to Miami. And, I, and I, like work never stopped. I couldn't stop working. And I was like, damn, like I need to drop this. And so eventually I just picked a date. Actually, there was someone on Twitter who asked me like, hey, when's the podcast coming back? And I was just like, yo, December 1st. And I had no intentions of it coming, but I was like, I just publicly told this one person. And so I kind of like owe him it. So although the podcast didn't come out on the 1st, I'm recording something on the 10th, but we did drop the community on the 8th. And that was the goal. I said, December 8th, we dropped this community. And no matter what, we have to release it. And I, I'm working with my homies. Shout out to Trixie, shout out to Jackie, shout out to Dave. We all built everything and rolled it out successfully. We already have over 100 members who have joined. And I'm fucking through the roof. Like, it's uh, everything that I hope for is already happening. And it's just day two. Like, I've seen people get in and introduce themselves right away with these crazy backgrounds and crazy stories from like really, really experienced creators to people who are just getting started or maybe they have a full time job. They do it as a passion, a passion project on the side. Um, and they're all sharing their stories and their excitement about being in a community space with other like-minded individuals that they can collaborate and bounce off ideas with and, and really push each other forward. And I, I, I knew that this is what needed to be done. It, I didn't know it'd take me a fucking whole year to do it, but shit, whatever. You know what I mean? Greatness takes time. You feel me? <laughs> it's live. Like it's really here. So anyway, black with no cream community is a thing now. And that's where we've been. And the podcast is exciting 
and I've been hungry to bring it back. I've been nervous to bring it back. I don't even know how to fucking talk on a mic anymore. I listened to a couple of the episodes the other day for the first time in a year and was like, man, we were, we have a really tight podcast. <laughs> like this shit is really fucking informative. Um, but you know, like I said, it took, it takes time and I knew that this was priority and I really want the community to be, to be thriving in a good place where it's operating smoothly and we're constantly pushing events like for example, right out the gate, I'm having two live events just in December. Uh, if you're listening to this now, on the 14th, my homie Beth, Beth, she's coming on. She's an incredible photographer, and we're going to talk about um, dealing with client notes. Like that shit can be super challenging. Um, having to manage, you know, client expectations and things like that. So we're going to have a whole open discussion, live discussion about that in the community, and then allow people to do Q and A. Um, and then following that, I have another one. I haven't announced it yet, but that'll be like the 20th, I think. Um, so like things like that, I'm going to be bringing events and bringing in people. I've already invited some really, really ill creators who are building their profiles right now who are going to be in there lurking. I put a pro badge on them. That's like my form of verification because I want you guys to know when you see this person lurking, liking, commenting, whatever, like these people are like, holy shit. Like I can't, like me, I can't believe some of these motherfuckers are in my community. You know what I mean? I look up to them. I'm inspired by them. I, I, it's so cool to think that they're in here. You know what I mean? Imagine me in Iowa living in my parents' basement, making drone content and fucking videos and photos and music shit and music videos and all the stuff that no one gave a shit about my town, really. You know what I mean? Like I'd share it and maybe someone would be like, that's cool, man, keep going. And it's like, okay. But like, I wanted people who understood me to see it. I wanted people who understood me to help me build it, to answer my questions. And when I share it, I, who knows what happens, but could you imagine sharing that shit into a space where fucking legendary creators are in there who are working with some of the biggest celebrity brands, you know, musicians, all that shit. Like they're, they're all in our space. And, and you know, people now, now that I relaunched, people are hitting me like, yo, what's up with the, what's up with the community? Like, let me check it out. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to just keep inviting these people and keep circulating them in and keep inviting them to come speak and do these things. And that shouldn't be, that's not obviously the driver of the community. The community itself is the main point, but these are like perks to it. The fact that I'm just in a cool place where I met a bunch of cool fucking people that we all look up to, or maybe you don't know about them yet, but you should. And I'm letting them into the space and we're going to do some events like this. And then hopefully 2020 to whatever next year is live events like i want to bring this shit to fucking irl like that shit that we did in that venue was so cool i want to do it again and i want to do it in bigger ways and i'm going to bring some fucking major brands into the space with me to help me empower the community you know what i mean like i'm a good talker i'm good at fucking making friends with people and i'm doing it and there's some incredible brands out there that care about helping y'all and that means so much to me and that I just think it's so cool to have built something that can empower all of us. Uh, and it, honestly, it takes, it's like I said, it takes a village. Um, it's going to take everybody joining and participating and giving back and not just in like a, and I think this is what I hated about Facebook. It's like a lot of people would just hop in to quickly like promote their shit. That's not what this new community is. This new community is about teaching, posting with education purposes or insightful purposes to say, Hey y'all check out this new thing I did for blah, blah, blah. This is how it was done. Here's some of the challenges I faced and this is how I overcame them because you telling me that helps me learn like, Oh shit. I never understood that I should, you know, back up my footage when I go and record for a client because the drive could fail. And you just telling me that story, say like save me in the future. You know what I mean? Like, posting with the intention to help others or asking insightful questions, things that aren't like that you definitely researched. And like, this is like a, I need, I need some expert help here, you know, from like the whole community. Um, because I think when people just hop in and say, Hey, check out my new thing or Hey, how do I fucking, uh, you know, what is rack focusing when you can like go Google shit like that? Like, please go Google shit like that. But in general, I think the power of having a community where everyone takes their time, and everyone invest in each other is going to be monumental for all of us and for creators who are just getting started and creators who have fucking been in the game for 10 years and who are crushing it. We all stand to benefit from that shit. And that's what's exciting about this shit. So um, you can enroll right now if you haven't, if you want to. We put a paywall behind it. So I don't know. I That's something I battled with all year was like, fuck. I've always said Black Widow Cream is free, and it was because it was on Facebook. But then I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Communities are hard as hell to run, 
And Black Widow Cream is hard as hell to run. And we still haven't made no money. You know what I mean? So I would love to try to employ people that could help me keep this thing going. You know what I mean? To invest into the events and invest into like my team and shit. Like, so at a certain point, you have to figure it out. And, you know, we ba- battled with it. And I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to say $10 a month, 30 day money back guarantee. If you hate that shit, hit me up. And for whatever reason, Black Widow Cream ain't your thing. Hit me up. You get your money back and fucking cancel your Hulu account because who gives a shit about watching Real Housewives when you could be in here growing and learning from some of the illest in the game and just fucking building, making friendships. You know what I mean? Like real ass friendships. (laughs) Fucking stop going out to eat all the time or whatever is bothering you for being like, oh, I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know. But these are the thoughts I have because I don't really know. To me, I feel like $10 is a fucking no brainer to be a part of some shit like this. I just want a good group of people to be in here and fucking empower each other. So... That's it. That's it. You know, podcasts are weird because you don't get instant gratification. I'll post this shit and hopefully you see it. And if you listen to it and you have feedback and shit, there's no comment section. No one really gets to like talk to you or tell you that they found it cool or that they hated the thing or whatever it is. Like none of that shit happens on podcasts. So it's always really weird because you just post and we keep moving. But obviously this is this means so much to me. And if it means something to you, your feedback is valuable to me. Like if you think this could work, if you're curious, if you have ideas for it, if you, if you think, you know, you get in there and you explore the community and you think like, Hey, I have an idea for a room. Like, I think we could make a room about blah, blah, blah. Like we can tweak shit. You know what I mean? Like the feedback is everything to me. So I hope you get in, you can check it out. You can see how organized it is, how powerful the tool is going to be. It's got an iOS app. An Android app is coming in 2022. Um, you can be right in there on your phone and get no, like, it's fucking ill. This community is fucking ill. Uh, do it. BWNC.com slash join. The page is up there. We made a fucking page. It took us like months of us just thinking about like, how should we say a sentence like this? Like we spent so much time on this shit. It's fucking amazing. I'm happy it's here. Black with no cream, baby. This is the only episode in 2021. That's a weird flex. <laughs> Have a good, you know, holiday season. Relax. Take time off. Don't get burnt out. And if you feel like you're going to get burnt out, take your breaks. All right. No matter how long they are, take your breaks. Try to find a way to like reset. It's, it's very fucking crucial. Uh, all right. Love y'all. Glad to be back. Peace.